Dave here for Ground Station TV and ReadyMade RC, and I just wanted to go over some of the different various wild and exciting things in the world of FPV and how to pick a system if you're looking to get into FPV. I get a lot of questions at Ground Station TV or through Team Echelon of people wanting to know what's the best system. I want to know everything that I need to buy so that I can have the best system. The short answer is there is no best system, otherwise there would only be one of each of these you know, components that are out here. The reality is there are a lot of options out there and some real benefits to the different options that exist. So when you get started, you're gonna to wanna to pick these different items based on what you're looking to do, the certain platform that you may fly, how you wanna see the video link. All of these lead to different options that make for a better setup for you. What I tend to recommend is you want to pick a vendor who's going to have all the gear that you need. In most cases, that's going to lead you to have a system that's cohesive, easy to connect, easily expandable, and that's going to really benefit you, especially starting out, to have all of that stuff sorted out and have somebody who can give you advice through the support from that vendor uh, on the different systems that you might want to do. When it comes down to all the gear, there is a ton of it, and there are a lot of options. And the good thing is FPV has been around long enough that there are a lot of really nice options depending on what you want to do. Some people want to use goggles and have the close-up immersive experience. For others, they don't want to be blocked uh, so heavily, or they may have prescription needs that exceed the ability to wear goggles or glasses. They may want to monitor. Some use it on a tripod. Others want to mount it to their radio. Some will use a miniature monitor in a small ground station like a lunchbox or even bigger. Others can get to camera choices that may uh, be microsystems, so they need a really small camera. They're flying a multi-copter and they want to do aerial photography or just standard good old GoPro footage. There are tons of options within each realm. So there's radio systems, transmitters, receivers, antenna, and all these are gonna make up your whole system. And the key is you wanna have an understanding of each of these elements and how they play a part into your FPV system to really utilize and maximize your system for you and what you wanna do. When you start out, I'm a fan of saying, look, you, you don't set goals that are too big and, and too hardcore. Long range, uh, high flying, behind dense objects. These are all things I really don't advise when you start out. There are people who make awesome videos and frankly, a lot of us have seen them and they're really inspiring. But most of those people have had experience to get them to that point. They know their gear, they know the limitations, and generally they're pretty good pilots or they've ruined a lot of gear learning to get there. When you're starting out, I really recommend taking a step back from that and focusing on making sure you're a good pilot, that you know your systems, you understand them, and you've got a lot of time under your belt proving that system and proving yourself as a pilot, um, challenging yourself even within a quarter mile. With FPV, you can do a ton in, in even short range and have a lot of fun. Let's do a quick breakdown on the different components and how you might go ahead and decide on different systems that you want to choose. For me, the jump off for an FPV system when I'm starting is going to be based on the platform I choose. Is it a fixed wing? Is it a multi-copter? Or is it a ground vehicle? And each of these different categories can lead to a whole different FPV experience and really be the basis of how I pick and choose gear and likely would be the same for most people. Once you've decided on an airframe, that's a perfect place to begin to start really thinking about the different FPV gear that you want. You're gonna to wanna to make the decision on if you wanna view with a monitor or do you wanna use goggles. The benefit to goggles are you have a very immersive experience. In some cases, like the Fat Shark wireless goggles, you can receive a 5.8 link wirelessly or you can still plug in to any of the frequencies directly and view the video on goggles in that way. The monitor, however, gives you the flexibility of looking up. You can transition from line of sight very easily. Other people can look in and see this. For some people who have prescription needs, they simply can't wear glasses or don't want to wear contacts with goggles or glasses, and the monitor is going to be a better option in the end for them. I would lean toward one or the other when you're getting started, and you can always expand later. Once you've made a decision on the video monitoring side, if you want to use goggles or a monitor, then you're in the home stretch to pick the final pieces of your package to make your FPV system. What you want to do next is 
decide on the frequency that you're going to use. There are a range of frequencies available in FPV currently. The 900 megahertz band, there is 1.2, 1.3, they both mean the same thing. They're essentially frequencies around 1280 megahertz. Uh, in the US there's also 1258 megahertz. Some international options give you more channels. Then moving up the line you have 2.3, there are a couple of frequencies within the 2.3 band, and then the 2.4 band also has a few frequencies. Moving up to the top, you've got 5.8, which also has a number of channels. Some of the benefits of the high frequency channels are multiple channels, of course, so you can fly with other people. The video is very clear from the higher frequency transmitters, and the antenna are very small. If you look at these, smallest antenna here, these are for a 5.8 system. As you move down in frequency, the antenna get larger in size. There's a whole bunch of theory that you can learn on antenna size and options. I'm only going to touch on it here, but that's where the forums will give you a lot of great information. So as you go down in frequency, while the antenna get bigger, one of the benefits are that the antenna have better penetration power. So if you are blocked by a dense object, a lower frequency is gonna penetrate better at the same wattage than a high frequency would. But you may be limited on channels. So if you wanna fly with a bunch of your friends, you've gotta pick and choose which is gonna suit you and, and your needs best. Uh, some of the concerns with using the 2.4 channel are most people who do standard RC these days are using a 2.4 radio link. You don't want to be near somewhere with a receiver that's on 2.4 if there's a transmitter on a different channel. That's going to cause interference. So the video is quite nice on those, those systems, but if you're at a club, for instance, and a lot of people are using 2.4 radios, I would avoid a 2.4 video link. If you pick a 1.3 system, a 900 megahertz system, I highly recommend you do not exceed 300 milliwatts for a multi-copter. Some people have done it, some people do it, and they're just fine. But the problem is, in such close proximity, a transmitter can bother a nearby receiver. And the 1.3 and 900 megahertz systems are known to bother GPS systems, and they're known to bother 2.4 and 433 megahertz radio systems. If you are using a plane, for instance, 400 milliwatts I've seen go out to 13 miles uh, with something like a biquad or a directional antenna and a stock whip. 13, 14 miles is more than most people will ever go in FPV and far more than you generally need to go normally. So you can imagine something like a 1500 milliwatt transmitter is almost never used for or not needed for a standard FPV system. Um, a lot of times people think higher wattage is better. That's not the case. Higher wattage means more interference to local receivers. So it's always a balance. And that's why you want to know your gear and know your system. If you have a multi-copter and you want to fly 10 miles, let's say you travel at 30 miles an hour, that's going to take you 20 minutes just to get to the 10 mile mark. Now that would mean another 20 minutes to get back. And I guarantee you, most people don't know of a multi-copter that can fly 40 minutes. Really, you've got overkill if, if that's what you're angling for. So again, you want to know your systems, you want to know what your goals are and, and set attainable, reasonable goals. Anyway, the transmitter type that you pick, the wattage, is then of course going to determine the receiver that you want to use. You can pick your receiver based on the channels you're going to transmit on. Now, antenna are going to be part of this collection and not to to get into this too much because we could go on for hours, but there are two main types of antenna used for video links in FPV. There's linear, which is your stock whip, a V antenna, a biquad, for instance, and a number of other types, or there are circular polarized antenna like the cloverleaf, the skew, the helicals here. You don't want to mix and match linear and circular polarized. You stick with one or the other. The other thing that goes on with antenna are omni antenna, or directional antenna. Omni antenna are going to radiate in a full 360 degree pattern. This is going to give you the option to go anywhere in a full circle with about the same range. The directional antenna are going to give a focused beam in the direction they face. So if I'm pointing this at you, you would be the craft and as the craft moved, this directional would want to stay 
in it because it basically projects a beam. Uh, you can imagine like a shotgun blast would go out. The further you are, the wider the beam gets. If you're planning on only flying in close, a directional like this really isn't going to help you much. You would probably benefit from just an omni setup picking up an all around yourself. So some basic tips on picking your antenna, linear or circular polarized, pick one or the other, not a mix of both. And Omni versus directional. Directional is if you're going to be flying out further and you really need to get out there. Basically the way I decide if I need a directional is once I find the edge using my Omnis and I still need to go further, that's when I entertain the idea of adding a directional. Otherwise, Omni antenna are going to work perfect for you on both the transmitter and the receiver. An important part, of course, in your decision making for your system is what type of camera are you going to use? A lot of people these days have the GoPro cameras and they are commonly used in FPV. They are nice because they record in HD. The negative for them that people would argue is some of them are not reliable depending on your firmware. You want to make sure and test a GoPro if you use that as your flight camera and make sure it's not freezing. And by test it, I mean literally test it for hours on end at your house, on the bench, and make sure it does not freeze up. And the contrasts typically are not as nice as something like a dedicated board camera like the Pro 700 from ReadyMade RC. This camera, while really small, does great in dusk, dawn, low light, high light situations, and it's got a adjustable parameters within it, which is something that makes this a very flexible and highly recommended camera for those getting into FPV. There are other options that are smaller, like a Mobius camera, which does have an audio video out on it. Now that's gonna fall similar into the category of the GoPro and the record internal camera types. Might not be your best flight camera, but if your angle is to get really good video as you fly and watch that back, you're probably gonna look into something like that. Then for some of your micro builds, there are really small cameras like this Pico uh, camera from ReadyMade RC. This thing is very small and very lightweight and works perfect for micro setups or big setups, uh, just if you want a small footprint from the camera. Then of course, something like the Sony Nex, uh, is not so commonly used in FPV, but for people who do aerial photography, they may like something like this, and uh, you can get an AV output from those. But generally, even using something like this on a gimbal, a lot of people want to use a dedicated flight cam, and the Pico or these ready-made board cams are going to work great for that. The radio link. The radio link is going to be important to your setup, but not quite as critical because frankly you can use a lot of different radio links. Traditional RC systems like 2.4 or even single channel links are going to work just fine. The long range systems that are out there are going to perform basically the same as a standard RC system is. They really are standard RC systems, they just have extended range. Probably the top three are the Shearer, the Dragon Link and the Easy UHF system. Those I think most would consider are in the top three of the systems out there. There are others and again, like with anything, if you really want to dig in, I recommend doing some research and seeing what the benefits are of each different one. But those are top level long range systems that are going to transmit in the 433 uh, megahertz channel group. And they will connect to most radios as well. In some cases you're going to need a special trainer port to connect in, but in general these long-range systems can be adapted to a majority of the radio systems that are out there. So you've got the whole plethora of options and if you're not sure on what really you want, the key is think about all the things that I've covered here. You want to go into a place like ReadyMade RC, open up a support ticket, Tell them, hey, here's the platform I want to use. Here's the camera I want to use. Uh, if you're not sure on the frequency or antenna, just say that. And they're going to be able to give you some advice and direction for a good jump off system. From there, you're going to easily be able to expand. You're going to be able to go in the different directions that you want in FPV. And that's going to make for a really nice start as you get going. The fact of the matter is, a lot of this gear has used all the time in FPV. And all you've got to do is get a jump off and from there, you can add on OSD systems, you can look into return to home systems, stabilization, but all that to me is actually extra bells and whistles. The key is you want a good base system, you want to be able to fly your craft as you would with no help, and you want to do that in a place where you're going to gain the experience you can. Being safe, 
not flying over people or built up areas, not flying too far away, crossing roads and all that. Start off small, start off safe, and you're gonna gain the experience that you want and you're gonna really enjoy FPV. So that's some of my advice and hopefully that helps. If you have questions, feel free to email me at GSTV or you can send in ticket support at ReadyMade RC and they're gonna be able to help you out pick a system that's gonna work great for you. So thanks for watching and Kelly Dave signing off.